Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and first off, let me apologize for the three video day. Busy day in the world of game development. First, we had the Unity Mega Bundle, actually the two Mega Bundles. We had Unity buying yet another company, and then for those of you that don't give a darn about Unity, well, we've got some Godot news as well. So today, we have the first official alpha of Godot 4. So for so those of you that are waiting for Godot 4, well, the wait just got a little bit shorter. We are one step closer to reality, although this is an alpha. What you see in front of you, this is Godot 4. And you may think, well, that looks a whole lot like Godot 3. Yep, wasn't a whole lot of changes on the UI side of things, but the eagle-eyed, you can really easily tell if something's Godot 4. What you do is you go into Help, you go to About, and you look here, and it says Godot 4, Alpha 1, Official. So again, very first release of Godot 4 that we are going to see. Uh, now, I do have to tell you again, Alpha. You do not use Alphas in production. You use this to try out the new features, or if you're ultimately going to be making your project in the Godot engine, you want to use the latest and greatest, and you think your timeline fits the Godot 4 release window, then it may make sense. Just expect breaking changes between releases, uh, and again, some bugs. So I'm going to go back here to the project list, and I'm going to open up the trusty third-person shooter demo. This is what I was going to showcase Godot 4 with, and um, boom, crash. So yeah, Alpha. Remember that right up front. So what we're going to do instead is focus more on the uh, the release notes of this particular release. And here we are. Uh, this is um, the Godot 4 announcement uh, per se. Let me just maximize that guy out. All right, so here we go. This, ladies and gentlemen, first off, is kind of hilarious. Remy, I think it was you that did this one. Uh, if you're the person behind the uh, Wordle-inspired title, which I also use for the title graphic of this, I think it's brilliant. Uh, kudos to you. If you're not yet hooked on Wordle, run away. It's very addictive. All right, so here we see release notes about Godot 4, uh, and we're going to see a couple of uh, the, the top-level features of this particular release. This goes into a heck of a lot of depth, and I'm not going to read it all to you uh, because, well, first off, I will link it if you want to get into this yourself, but it does break down what to expect in Godot 4. It also kind of breaks out, this is an alpha. It's for experimentation, and it is not feature complete, and it is not stable. On top of that, there will likely be breaking changes between this and the first beta release. Only the beta will mark so-called feature freeze. So it wasn't until beta that they won't be adding new features and functionality to it. So there's still, a, this is kind of like a snapshot of Godot in action, but this doesn't necessarily encompass all that Godot 4 will be. Once the beta starts releasing, it will feature freeze. That means there should be no more additions. Now, the Godot team aren't great about not adding more new additions. Just one of those things to, to expect. So we're going to look at what is new here. Now, if you've been following along on this channel, you may have noticed a lot of the new stuff is actually getting backported to other versions like Godot 3.3, 3.4, and 3.5, things like Occlusion Calling. Uh, it's nice to see the portal systems, etc., all being backported. So a lot of the stuff that we're going to see in Godot 4 is also now available for the latest versions of Godot 3, which also should make the wait a little bit easier. Um, there are over 700 contributors to this. So nice to see that the Godot project is growing more and more. Uh, we start off things, there's been in development for over two years. There's a ton of changes to the core. You can't really demonstrate the core stuff that well. So if you want to jump in, uh, Juan Lenetsky has... Uh, kind of done some breakdowns of what's happened in the last couple blog posts. I've covered most of them, so we're not going to get into like the core level changes, but I think this is probably the big one. Vulkan's front end, sorry, Vulkan's rendering is being added to Godot 4. Vulkan rendering is sort of the next gen fidelity stuff here. There are two new backends, a like clustered and mobile, uh, obviously for different uh, device profiles. Um, so, uh, you know, we don't need, or hopefully won't need the GLES type profile going forward. Uh, so all new render on the back end global illumination system was remade from scratch. Ironically, global illumination in um, the Godot 4 game engine actually works very, very similar to the much type lumen system in Unreal Engine 5. Um, so GI probe was replaced with voxel GI, a real-time solution for fit for small and medium scale environments. Um, comes with a GI solution for large open worlds, um, sign distance field illumination or SDFGI. Uh, then we've got screen space indirect lighting, uh, light map baking done using the GPU, volumetric fog, um, and so on and so forth. And GPU-based particle systems and a whole lot more there. So again, I'm kind of skimming over this because you could get into a ton of detail. And quite frankly, again, I will link it so you can read for yourself. Uh, We've also got, again, performance optimization, things like occlusion culling, uh, 
uh, portals weren't mentioned here, or at least not yet. Uh, they were occlusion calling was thankfully backported. Automatic mesh LOD, which is kind of what Nanite is all about. If we stay with the Unreal Engine 5 theory, um, manual. H levels of details with visibility ranges. Um, then we've got important note require, uh, regarding OpenGL ES. Since not all hardware supports Vulkan yet, a, a GL ES based OpenGL renderer is also being developed, uh, but it's quite limited. So the, actually the same thing happened with uh, Godot uh, 3 is there was no intention to bring the, I think it was, I don't remember the versions now. I think it was the ES2 render wasn't going to be brought forward. And then since it kind of had compatibility issues, they ultimately forward ported it as well. So here we're moving to Vulkan in the future, but to back support devices, there is going to be a GL back end for older machines and or things that have bad driver support. Generally, that means Intel. <laughs> um, so then we go into the category of physics and navigation. Um, they have their a big return of the Godot in-house 3D physics engine, Godot Physics. Uh, it used Bullet for the longest time. We felt, however, that a bespoke solution would give us more flexibility when implementing new features and fixing issues. Um, so they bringing it up on par with Bullet in terms of features, improving performance, and so on. Added new collision shapes, cylinders, and height map, as well as re-implemented soft body nodes. Uh, addition to feature-specific improvements, general optimization techniques such as broad pace optimization, multi-threading support, implemented for both 2D and 3D environments. Um, so definitely some big changes on the physics side of things. We're going to get into a little bit more of the, the fine-tuned details. I'm going to gloss over that. Another thing, not really physics-specific, uh, and I think this was actually just backported to 3.5. I covered this in another video, is the navigation server for basically on-the-fly dynamic navigation. So for pathfinding for your AI characters, etc. cetera, uh, there's the navigation server available. Works in both 2D and 3D as well, which is nice. Uh, we've got scripting uh, improvements. Recent studies show that 100% of users love to write a lot of code for their projects. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got a lot of changes to the, the syntax and, and the functionality of GDScript. Um, first class function in Lambda's new property syntax, the await and super keywords, typed array, uh, arrays, uh, built in annotations. Um, so we keep going from there. There was a rewrite of the language back end. Uh, there's a lot of documentation on that. I think I've covered it a couple times in the past. Also the uh, compatibility layer, um, it's being made easier. It's now called, um, there's now GD extension. Uh, it takes the best parts of creating GD native extensions and writing custom engine modules. Code that uh, you make can be ported into the engine if need be and vice versa. Some engine parts can be made into GD extension libraries, reducing engine bloat. Uh, so that's nice in terms of extending it. So GUI got some improvements as well, uh, including better support for uh, right to left and left to right languages. I suppose right to left because by default, we're mostly left to right. Um, localization advantages there. Um, Re-implemented Godot's text rendering system under the umbrella of the text server. Backend solution does the heavy lifting for everything that we are seeing here. Uh, further, further assisted by pseudo localization tool, uh, summer of code project allows you to easily test the effect of diacritics and other font permutations on your GUI without having to rely on actual translations to stress your project. Uh, text rendering changes uh, as well here, support for open type, etc. Then we get into the audio area. Um, so what do we have going on here? It takes full advantage of the existing audio server. Significant chunk of audio processing logic has been moved there. Changes aim to address various popping issues, race conditions, and overall poor resampling behavior. Also paves a road for future performance improvements to, or for future improvements to the Godot's audio system. More flexible and feature such as built-in polyphony sound support. Um, and so on, this leads to a more satisfying audio effects such as gunfire, improvements in the world of multiplayer as well, be it DNS, HTTP, TCP, UDP, ENET, or WebSockets. Uh, everything was refactored, bug fixes, and so on. Networking in Godot 4 should be an altogether more pleasant and reliable experience. Uh, GDScript 2 changes are, makes RPC can now be configured using the new annotation system. Uh, finally, vastly more stable and improved foundation allows us to build higher level functionality on top of it. Uh, importing also slash exporting has gotten some gains there as well. Um, do, 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 do. Godot 4 comes with a dedicated import dialogue, allows you to preview and customize every part of the imported scene. It makes material, it's materials and physical properties. Uh, scripts can be used for additional tweaks. Thanks to the new plugin interface, you should also notice a significant bump in texture import speeds. Um, and you can import GLTF uh, 
at runtime, allowing for more modular 3D projects. So you could actually not have to use the importer tools. You can actually load in GLTF files at runtime, which is kind of cool. On the topic of GLTF, it's not actually mentioned here, I don't think, but you can actually export your level as a GLTF. So if you have a Godot project and you want to get the polygonal and texturing and so on data out of it, you can export as GLTF now too, which is quite cool. And we got a number of improvements to the editor. Like I said, the editor itself, the, the UI in Godot 4 looks a whole lot like Godot 3.x. Uh, but there are some uh, new features and functionality in there. One of the biggest areas is in the tile uh, editor. So the 2D tile map tools just got kind of across the board improvements. Uh, just there's been five blog posts done on the subject of the tiling improvements in it, but um, some pretty extensive changes there. Uh, there's new animation editor, uh, editor usability improvements across the board, new editor theme uh, in there as well, and then more to come, including a port to .NET 6. On the topic of .NET 6, mono builds are not currently included in the alpha. So right now, the downloads that are available are for standard builds only. The C Sharp stuff, not available as of yet. There are some known issues, so be aware of those as well. Uh, there obviously are going to be lots of bugs and glitches and so on because this is an Alpha 1 release. If you want to go ahead and grab these things, the downloads are available here. Uh, as you can see, most major platforms are support. I have no idea why the font is so hideous on this downloads page, but I've always noticed that anyways. Uh, so you can see here, we've got... Um, and Linux OS X versions, Win32, all available for download. Um, just the only thing you're kind of missing right now, again, is that mono version overall. But ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Godot 4, first official alpha is here. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.